Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the New York City Baha'i Center, one of my favorite places in New York City. I'm Mona Moazes, and I'll be your MC for the evening, and I'm so happy that each of you has decided to take the time and join us here tonight on this special evening. We are celebrating the festival of Rezvan. Now, Rezvan means paradise, but I'm going to let someone else talk to us about what the holy day truly entails. First, let me tell you a little bit about the Baha'i faith. A manifestation of God named Baha'u'llah, which means glory of God, brought the Baha'i faith to humanity back in the 1800s. And when he brought the faith to humanity, he brought with it several principles. Principles like the equality of men and women, like the independent investigation of truth, like the complete elimination of all forms of prejudice and the abolishment of extremes of wealth and of poverty. And in his message, he also taught us that if religion should be the cause of disunity, it should cease to exist. The Baha'i faith believes in the three onenesses, the oneness of God, the oneness of all religion, and also the oneness of all of us, of humankind. And so oneness or unity is truly at the heart of the Baha'i faith. Being socially connected on a global scale is also at the heart of the Baha'i faith, and Baha'is all around the world are staying active in terms of how to be spiritually connected during this really difficult and challenging time of the coronavirus. Actually, our governor, the governor of New York State, Governor Cuomo, challenged all of us with a special and really powerful goal just last month. He asked us, how can we remain socially distant but stay spiritually connected? Let's play a clip. Realize the time frame that we're expecting, make peace with it, and find a way to help each other through this situation because it's hard for everyone. And the goal for me, socially distanced, but spiritually connected. How do you achieve socially distanced, but spiritually connected? I don't have the answer, but I know the question. We are staying spiritually connected tonight. Throughout the next one hour program, we'll be hearing prayers from different members of the community that will tap into our spiritual senses. We'll have the opportunity to hear the beautiful music from spiritual giants and, and musical powerhouses that actually grace the streets of New York City. And perhaps most importantly, we're gonna see the diversity of New Yorkers. We're going to hear from New Yorkers from every borough and neighborhood and really just fall in love again with the diversity of New York City. Now, let's turn it over to Luke Bolton, a member of the local spiritual assembly of the Baha'is of New York City. Luke? Thank you, Mona. Welcome to our Rizvan celebration where for 12 days at the end of April and the beginning of May, Baha'i communities around the world celebrate our most holy festival. The history of this celebration takes us back to Baghdad, Iraq in 1863, when Baha'u'llah found himself once again exiled from his home. But if this is the most holy festival, then why would Baha'is celebrate this time of impending hardship and separation? To answer this question begins with Baha'u'llah's initial arrival to Baghdad 10 years earlier. He arrived as a prisoner, exiled from his native land of Persia because of his central role in spreading the Babi faith, a new religion proclaiming the advent of a new day and the imminent coming of a long awaited promised one. The Babi religion swept Persia causing at once incredible excitement and upheaval. Baha'u'llah and his family had been sent away from his native land in the hopes that his removal would impede the spread of this new faith, as well as curtail Baha'u'llah's own influence in this fledgling religious community. And so Baha'u'llah arrived as an exile into Baghdad, a city whose residents were either unaware were hostile to the teachings of the Babi religion. Despite these challenging circumstances, 
the people of the city soon began to flock to him, enraptured by his presence and seeking his wise counsel. At one point, even the governor was coming to him for advice. The Persian government, of course, was infuriated when they found out in report after report that not only had their plan failed to quench his influence, but Baha'u'llah's stature had grown along with the respect for the Babi faith in Baghdad and the surrounding area. Frustrated by their inability to repress his influence, the Persian authorities again ordered Baha'u'llah's exile. One can only imagine the despair and grief of the community when the order for Baha'u'llah's exile came. People of all walks of life flocked to his small house to pay their respects before he left. In fact, the number was so great that one of the notables of the city offered his garden park to Baha'u'llah so that he could receive more visitors in a beautiful environment surrounded by the scent of roses and the calling of the nightingale. And yet these feelings of sorrow and loss at Baha'u'llah's impending departure would prove to be temporary because of the momentous announcement that he made on the first day of his arrival to the garden. You see, when the Bab first established his new religion in Persia 19 years before, he foretold the coming of an even greater messenger of God, one who would usher in a new stage in the maturity of humanity, bringing spiritual teachings that would form the foundation of a new global divine civilization. On the first day in the garden, Baha'u'llah declared that it was he who was this divine messenger, the manifestation of God for this day, whose appearance not only signaled the foundation of the Baha'i faith, but also infused new power into all creation. Speaking of this change, Baha'u'llah said, the whole creation was revolutionized and all that are in the heavens and all that are on earth were stirred to the depths. Baha'u'llah's proclamation changed the hearts of his followers so that the sadness at his departure was transformed into joy at the realization of his true station. Baha'u'llah called the garden where he made this stunning announcement, Rizvan, meaning paradise, and designated the 12 days that he spent in that garden as a time at once sacred and joyous. Thus, it is during Rizvan that Baha'is celebrate the inauguration of Baha'u'llah's dispensation. In the words of Baha'u'llah, this is an age where it is incumbent upon all the peoples of the world to reconcile their differences and with perfect unity and peace, abide beneath the shadow of the tree of his care and loving kindness. It behooveth them to cleave to whatever will. In this day, be conducive to the exaltation of their stations and the promotion of their best interests. Now, this message is just as relevant today as it was 150 years ago. In a time filled with conflict and division, inequality and prejudice, Baha'is all over the world are working to apply the teachings of our faith to foster spiritual empowerment, eradicate the insidious effects of prejudice, and ultimately transform the essential relationships in society between individuals, community, and institutions so that they are realigned to promote the welfare and inherent dignity of all humanity. It is also during this time that Baha'is carry out our annual elections, seeking to bring into being the structures of a new divine civilization laid down by Baha'u'llah himself. In thousands of localities around the globe during Rezvan, Baha'is vote for the nine members of their local administrative bodies, known as spiritual assemblies. These bodies will help provide guidance and support for Baha'is as we seek to apply Baha'u'llah's teachings for, to the world around us. And so we thank you for joining us during this time. 
where we come together to celebrate the founding of our faith, the diffusion of a new set of divine guidance for this age, and the continued development of our guiding institutions. May this Rizvan be a spring of joy and hope during this challenging time as we seek this to be sources of mutual support and steadfastness to the world around us. Happy Rizvan. Thank you, Luke, for giving us that beautiful glimpse into the festival of Rezvan. Now we're going to hear a prayer. Glory to thee, O oh my God. The first stirrings of the spring of thy grace have appeared and clothed thine earth with verdure. The clouds of the heaven of thy bounty have rained their rain on this city, within whose walls is imprisoned him whose desire is the salvation of thy creatures. Through it the soil of the city hath been decked forth, and its trees clothed with foliage, and its inhabitants gladdened. The hearts of thy dear ones, however, will rejoice only at the divine springtime of thy tender mercies, whereby the hearts are quickened, and the souls are renewed, and the trees of human existence bear their fruits. The plants that have sprung forth, O oh my Lord, in the hearts of thy loved ones have withered away. Send down upon them from the clouds of thy spirit that which will cause the tender herbs of thy knowledge and wisdom to grow within their breasts. Rejoice then their hearts with the proclamation of thy cause and the exaltation of thy sovereignty. Their eyes, O oh my Lord, are expectantly turned in the direction of thy bounty, and their faces are set towards the horizon of thy grace. Suffer them not through thy bounty to be deprived of thy grace. Potent art thou by thy sovereign might over all things. No God is there but thee, the Almighty, the help in peril, the self-subsisting. Baha'u'llah. This great city boasts many talented musicians, but let's talk about jazz music for a second. Dizzy Gillespie is one of the most recognizable faces in jazz music, known for his swollen cheeks and for a spiritual generosity that poured out into all of his musical performances. Dizzy was a member of the Baha'i Faith, as was Mike Longo. Mike was the pianist for Dizzy Gillespie's All-Star Band and was Dizzy's musical director. And in this Baha'i Center, Mike brought jazz concerts to the New York City jazz community every Tuesday night. Mike passed away this past March 22nd, and we continue to pray for the progress of his soul in the next world. Now let's hear some of the music from Dizzy, from Mike, from the Crimson Arc, and from other musical giants.
which had descended from the realm of glory.
That was so beautiful. Thank you to all those musicians for giving us the gift of music for tonight and for touching our souls. Now we're going to turn it over to you, New York City. I mentioned earlier that we really love the diversity in New York City, and now it's time to show it. We asked you a few weeks ago to submit videos and to submit photos of your friends and family celebrating the Holy Day of Rezvan. Let's take a look. Oh. 
O my Lord, O my Lord, I am a child of tender years. Nourish me from the breast of thy mercy, and train me in the bosom of thy love. Educate me in the school of thy guidance, and devil at me under the shadow of thy bounty. Deliver me from darkness, make me a brilliant light. Free me from unhappiness, make me a flower of the rose garden. Suffer me to become a servant of thy threshold, and confer upon me the disposition and nature of the righteous. Make me a cause of bounty to the human world, and crown my head with the diadem of eternal life. Verily thou art the powerful, the mighty, the seer, the hearer of Uraha. That was fantastic! Now we invite you to sing along with Ala Yousefi and people from all around the world in the song called Unite. Now nobody can hear your singing voice, so go ahead and sing loud and sing proud. You'll see the words on your screen.
In the world around us, we see so much hope. In the city around us, we see so much hope. However difficult matters are at present, and however close to the limits of their endurance some sections of societies are brought, humanity will ultimately pass through this ordeal. And it will emerge on the other side with greater insight and with a deeper appreciation of its inherent oneness and interdependence. These were words shared with us by the Universal House of Justice, the governing body of the Baha'is of the world, and these were words of hope. And today and tomorrow, we are coming together online in virtual children's classes and virtual study circles to stay spiritually connected, and we invite anyone who's interested to join. Dear friends, thank you so much for joining me here tonight. Happy, happy Rezvan, and before we conclude, we'll hear a short closing prayer. گلزار قدم را گشوده چشم ها را بشارت دهید که وقت مشاهد آمد و گوش ها را مجد دهید که هنگام استماع آمد دوستان بوستان شوق را خبر دهید که یار بر سر بازار آمد و هدهدان سبا را آگه کنید که نگاه رزن با داده ای عاشقان روی جانان غم فراغ را به سرور به سال تبدیل لمایید و سم هجران را به شهد لقا بیا میزی اگر چه تا حال عاشقان از پی مشوق دوان بودند و حبیبان از پی محبوب روان در این ایام فضل صبحانی از غمام رحمانی چنان هات نموده که معشوق طلب عاشق می نماید و محبوب جویای احباب گشته این فضل را غنیمت شماری و این نعمت را کم نشماری